This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Yardimos, and today we're going to talk about the unit circle. In this video, we're going to explain what the unit circle is. We're going to uh, figure out where the numbers on the unit circle come from, and we're going to figure out how the unit circle is used and what problems it's used for. Uh, we're also going to explain how the uh, unit circle works. Okay, so let's get to work. All right, here's section one of our video. What is the unit circle? Well, the unit circle looks like this. And uh, you'll see that we call it a unit circle because the radius of this circle is special. Um, it actually has a radius of one. You could tell that by looking at the points here. Um, we have a point here that's at uh, one zero. Here is zero one. Here is negative one zero. Here's zero negative one. All of those points are one unit away from the origin. Origins right here. So um, all of these points happen to be one unit away from the origin. And uh, what's nice about it is that there's also a variety of other points. Um, on there that are tied to special angles like 30, 45, and 60. Uh, here you can see the radian measures as well. So uh, you can see it's nice and convenient. It, it ties together uh, a variety of things. You can see the angle uh, matched up with its corresponding radian measure matched up with its corresponding point on the unit circle. And that's true for all of these points around. You can see that the 30, 45, 60 points on this unit circle um, are duplicated around the whole circle. So what's the difference between the points in the first quadrant to the second? Well, they're mirror images. Uh, the only difference is that the x values are negative in the second quadrant. That's it. It's the only difference between them. What's the difference between the points in the first quadrant and the fourth? Well, uh, the y values are positive up here but they're negative down here. So you can see that a 30 degree angle over here has this point, but a negative 30 degree angle, which is 330, has the same point except the y value is negative. Okay, so you can see that there's a lot of symmetry going uh, around this circle regarding the original three points here in quadrant one. Well, most people are fairly unimpressed at this point seeing this unit circle. Uh, and I guess uh, you have to follow through with several more sections in this video to understand why this actually has great value. Okay, let's go on to our next section. This is section two. Where do the numbers come from? So these uh, numbers on the unit circle need to be explained. So let's go back to uh, special triangles. Uh, let's start with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's say we start with this triangle uh, that's got a 30 degree angle. Let me get rid of this. Make, try to make it neat. Uh, let's say it's got a 30 degree angle right here. Well, we know opposite 30 is 1. Uh, this is our 90 degree angle, which has to be opposite that is 2. And then this is our 60 degree angle up here. Opposite it is radical 3. Now, the problem with this triangle is that it does not fit on this unit circle. What I mean by that is since the radius of our unit circle is 1, this has a length of 2, and I would like this hypotenuse to be able to fit here. So in order to make this uh, fit, you know, and obviously this is not to scale. This triangle looks smaller than this, but imagine that this has got a length of 2. I want to get this length down to 1. So I'm going to divide this side by 2, which means I have to divide all the sides by 2 to make sure that all the relationships and all the ratios remain the same. So if I divide all the sides by 2, uh, you can see that here I'm getting a value of 1. Okay, And you can see that now this triangle will fit on the unit circle. All right, why is this important? Well, if I start here, imagine this being the origin, and I wanted to graph this point, I would have to go right and up to get to this point. So imagine me placing this 
triangle right here at the origin. Uh, to get to the 30 degree angle, right, to get to this point, I would have to go right square root of 3 over 2 up a half. Okay, so in other words, I'm imagining a triangle being right here on the unit circle. Okay, doing this very rough. But you can see that this bottom length is square root of 3 over 2, and then the side length is going to be a half. See, square root of 3 over 2, side length is half. Everything matches up. So this point comes from this triangle. The bottom side is the x value, and the side going up is our y value, a half. Okay, so you can kind of see where those numbers come from. All right, let's uh, take a look at a 60-degree triangle. Okay, uh, I'll put it right over here. So let's say we got a 60 degree angle. Well, if this is 60, opposite is radical 3. This must be the 30, which would mean this is 1. And opposite the 90 is 2 again. Again, this doesn't fit on the unit circle because it's got a hypotenuse length of 2. So I need to divide it by 2, which means I divide everything by 2. Okay, so again, if I were to place this triangle on the unit circle, you could see that I have a radius or a hypotenuse length of 1, and it would fit right here. Okay, it would fit right here. And that means that if I had a 60 degree angle to get to this point from the origin, I would have to go right a half, see, right a half, and I would have to go up square root of 3 over 2. I have to go up square root of 3 over 2 to get to this point. So that's where that point comes from. Alright, let's get to our last one. Let's talk about a 45 degree angle. So let me draw 45. It's a very looking rough 45 degree angle. Okay, well opposite 45 is 1, opposite 90 is radical 2, and this must be the other 45, opposite must be 1. Okay, again, this is not going to fit on the unit circle because the hypotenuse is all wrong. It needs to be a length of 1. So I need to divide by radical 2, which means I divide everything by radical 2. Okay, that means the hypotenuse, or our radius, turns out to be 1. Perfect. That's perfect because it now will fit on the unit circle. Um, well, a problem here, you never leave radicals in the denominator. If you remember, you have to rationalize the denominator, so you multiply top and bottom by radical 2. We call this rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so if I multiply top and bottom by radical 2, here I'm going to get radical 2 over 2, and here for this side, I'm going to get radical 2 over 2. So that means if I were to plop this triangle on the unit circle right here at the 45 degree angle, uh, let's see, what are the lengths? How do I get to this point if I start here at the origin? Well, I would have to go right square root of 2 over 2, and I would have to go up square root of 2 over 2. See, i got to go right square root of 2, over 2, and then up square root of 2 over 2. That's where that point comes from. Okay, so that explains where these three points come from. Now, of course, again, like I said in the last section, uh, we know from symmetry that uh, all the points are related to each other because they're just mirror images either going across or bottom or even across here again. Okay, so that's where all those points come from on the unit circle. Section 3. How is the unit circle used? Well, you know, there's problems in trigonometry that students have to do related to angles and fractions and ratios, and uh, you'll see how it works. Well, first of all, let me give you a little background information. Uh, all the points on here are going to work in a very special way. Uh, picture all the points looking like this, where you have cosine of an angle, sine of an angle, and remember that any point on uh, in a plane is always x comma y. This is very helpful. Okay, let me show you what I mean by just going through our first example. Okay, so here's example number one. Let's say we wanted to calculate the cosine of 210 degrees. So 
a fairly easy problem. It's going to be really easy with this unit circle. First thing we do is we dial up 210 and we figure out where's 210 facing. And we can see the 210 is over here and it's in our third quadrant. Now you can see that this is the point associated with 210 and we've got an x value and a y value. When we do cosine, we grab the x value. And there it is. There's our x value. So the x value is negative radical 3 over 2. And that's your answer. It's just that easy. There's no need to make uh, a reference triangle. No need to put on the sides with Sokotoa. It's all good. You're done. That's all you have to do. Okay, let's try another example. Here's problem number two. Let's say we have the sine of 3 fourths pi. We want to figure out what's the ratio associated with 3 fourths pi. Well, this circle you can see also has radian measures. We don't have to do any conversions right there. So 3 fourths pi is 135 degrees. We've got this point. Since it's sine, we're going to try to calculate. We grab the y value. So it's radical 2 over 2. Done. That's all you have to do. Really easy to use the unit circle. Okay, let's move on to our third example. Alright, so for our third example, let's get a little bit more tricky. We're going to do inverse sine. Now remember, when we do inverse sine, we're looking for an angle. We're trying to figure out the sine of what angle is a half. Now keep in mind that when you do inverses of sine, the inverse sine is only defined in certain quadrants. Like when you do inverses, sine and tangent are defined in quadrants 1 and 4. When you do inverse cosine, it's defined in quadrants 1 and 2. Okay, so keeping that in mind, when I do the inverse sine, uh, I'm going to look for uh, a y value that has a fraction of a half. Okay, well let's see. Y value, oh, there you go. There's a half over here in the first quadrant. There's a half over here in the second quadrant. And these are other negative halves. They don't work. Now remember, sine, the inverse of sine, is only defined in quadrants 1 or 4. So I'm going to ignore this value here in the second quadrant. I'm only considering this. So therefore, the answer has got to be pi over 6 or 30 degrees, whichever you prefer to write, uh, whether you prefer to write radians or degrees. I'm going to write this in degrees. So your answer is 30 degrees. Let's try another one. All right, for our fourth example, let's try a cosine. We're going to do inverse cosine of negative radical 2 over 2. Okay, well, first thing I'm going to do is look in the unit circle. Since I'm doing cosine, I'm going to look for the x value that has this x value. So where is x negative? Well, x is negative over here, right here, on this point, and uh, with a negative square root of 2 over 2. In this quadrant, I got a negative square root over 2, radical 2 over 2, right here. Okay, so there's two values. Now again, when you do inverse cosine, it's only defined in quadrants 1 and 2. So I'm only going to be using those two quadrants. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to not look at this quadrant 3. I'm going to say that my answer is 135 degrees. Okay, so that's what I'm going to put right there. I'm going to put a 135 degrees or otherwise known as 3 fourths pi. So the only way to really appreciate the value of using uh, the unit circle when we do these problems is to imagine how these problems would have been done before. You remember, to do these problems you'd have to use uh, a reference angle, a reference triangle, we would have to set up the triangle with uh, uh, values using you know, special right triangles like 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90. It, it's a hassle. So this triangle uh, is, is not needed to be made, you just use the unit circle. Section 4, why does it work? Right, so you may be wondering, why don't I have to make special triangles to do these problems? Why can I just grab x or y values on the unit circle? Okay, well, 
let's take a look at how we would have done this problem before. If someone would have asked, hey, how do you do uh, cosine of 30 degrees? Well, you would build a reference triangle. So you would draw one. And you'd say, okay, here's 30 degrees. There's our focus angle. Opposite is 1. Opposite to 90 is 2. Opposite the 60 degree angle is radical 3. You'd say, what's the definition of cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So you'd say, okay, the adjacent to the angle is square root of 3. The hypotenuse is 2. So, therefore, my answer has to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, well, we're using a normalized triangle. What I mean by that is, remember, we took the same triangle, but instead I divided all the sides and I divided all the sides by 2. So when I divide that by 2, I get 1. Divide that by 2, I get 1 half. I divide that by 2, I get radical 3 over 2. Wait a minute. I divided by 2. Didn't I divide by the hypotenuse? That is the hypotenuse. That is the definition of what cosine is. That means you take, and sine, you take these sides and you divide them by the hypotenuse. For cosine, you take the adjacent side and you divide it by the hypotenuse. Yep, we did it already. That is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Uh, how do we do sine? We're supposed to take the opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse. There you go. That is one half. So when I want to calculate this using the unit circle, all I have to do is go to 30 degrees, right there. I follow over here and I say cosine is the x value, and it's right there. And cosine is the x value. So because we already divided by 2, which is the hypotenuse, right? We divided all the sides by 2. That's what gave us the cosine. The cosine's right there. It's sitting right there as an x value. Or in other words, is the horizontal value in this triangle. Okay? And can, you know, same way for the uh, y value here. This y value has already been divided by the hypotenuse, which was 2. So 1 divided by 2 is a half. So that's why these unit circles work. They're already divided by the hypotenuse. Of course, the downside is it only works for cosine and sine. And of course, they're reciprocals if you want to look at the uh, uh, secant and cosecant. But if you're just talking about sine and cosine, this is great. The unit circle works great. Now, for tangent, not as easy. You could use it, but you've got to do some division, which I'm not going to get into in this video. Okay, so it's just a shortcut for sine and cosine. Okay, that's our video. Uh, make sure you go to mathguide.com, check out our other interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and of course our text-based lessons. Take care.